countdown? <laughs> oh no, that was the five second countdown. We are live. <laughs> oh, now we are. I was gonna say it said. Right. I don't have a slate. All right, what am I, what am I supposed to do over here? <laughs> well, you could have counted down from five. <laughs> Honestly, I was pressing the button. Four, <laughs> three. <two. laughs> All right. Okay, everybody. Now I know for next time. Thank you. We're we're doing our our chat for the Green Mile, and uh, obviously I'm Jessica. Everyone can go around and pretend like we don't know each other and say their names, <laughs> or not. That's fine. Nobody I'm John. Be watching this. Although Andy could be watching this and he doesn't know us, so go ahead, John. There you go. All right, I'm John. I'm Mike, but I'm pretty sure Andy knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Eric. Okay, so we're going to be talking about The Green Mile, which is the book that I particularly love, so I'm really excited to talk about it. And uh, Melody might be talking about it with us, so let's try to keep it PG-13. <laughs> Okay. Uh, she's only two, so let's just keep it PG thirteen. Um. So, I mostly can't speak my notes because I can't look at Facebook on my phone, and um, the tablet's not working. So, let's mostly just talk about first impression. I'm particularly interested in people who. It seems like can't remember what happened. Because <laughs> I definitely, I've read it multiple times and we've seen the movie and I knew exactly what was going to happen. So what, sounds like you guys were talking about it when I logged on. So what, were you, what were your first impressions? So what I was saying was, I, I had read this book once before a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I generally remembered the, the scope of it. Um, I knew that coffee was innocent. I remember the bad execution of Delacroix that, you know, um, God, I can't remember the warden's name, but that he was not the warden, the, uh, the Percy. Yeah. No, the freaking protagonist, the whole thing. Um, Oh, Oh, the narrator. Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Edgecombe. Oh, Edgecombe. 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 Thank you. There we go. Yeah. I, I remember that he was really old, but, but I didn't remember the specifics of what happened after the execution of Delacroix. I didn't remember the midnight ride. Um, I didn't remember how sort of the whole subplot with Percy was resolved and um, the other prisoner and all of that. And so to, to read that again, it was, you know, it was, it was nice. It was suspenseful. You know, I, I knew they would get away with the late night ride and that it was to work out. I feel like I would have remembered if it didn't, but at the same time reading it was, it was good fun. And then, you know, the, I couldn't remember what had happened, you know, that, that he swallowed, he sort of swallowed the tumor and didn't cough it immediately back up. I, I forgot how that then played out. And, and to read that was, was, it was good. It was great. It was, it was a lot of fun. This book was just a lot of fun from beginning to end. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I, like I, I don't know if you heard what I said. I, I've never read the book, but I saw the the film. I don't remember the midnight ride. Um, I didn't remember what happened between um, Delacroix and uh, Coffee's execution, and I, I, I don't remember anything about old Paul. Um, I really feel like I need to watch this movie again. You old should. Paul wasn't in the movie that much which yeah. we will discuss when we get to the movie but yeah 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 it was it was like bookending it if that it was very light um yeah i i thought i had seen the movie and re-watching it while i read this book i was very wrong so it was all a surprise <laughs> it was all a blast um yeah it kind of makes you wonder like how much of like our pop culture seeps into your subconscious and like convinces you of things or at least me because i would i could have sworn i knew exactly what happened and like what was all going down at each point and it just all seemed brand new 
It's possible they like remade the movie or something. <laughs> but the book is very much like it, it felt all sharp and maybe we can save this more for the movie talk, but I thought it was really refreshing how to the book they stuck. Like how uh what's what's that? How much it was basically exactly like the book. Yeah. Um I really like this book. Um, I think it's, again, really um, a great character book We that keeps coming up with almost every book that we do. But yeah. he he's just so good at writing characters. Um, even the ones that he doesn't dive into that much, like um, the Diederich parents you get a sense of them you know just like the little bits that they talk about them you know um, and the brother and how you know he what their farm is like and how they're considered well to do for the depression era but if it were the 50s it they wouldn't be and you know um kind of one of my favorite I, I flagged it because I really liked it um, when the mom when, when they found out the girls were gone and calling um, trying to get the sheriff and sent, she called the central you know I just loved, I love all the whole discussion about the call central for stuff and she's like oh my god you know this is what's happening and um, I need the sheriff and she's like oh my god yes ma'am oh I'm praying for you right now and she like interrupts her and she goes, okay but um, can you tell the Lord to wait long enough for you to put me through to the sheriff and I was like uh, yeah that's, that's perfect that's kind of how I feel like what I would say thank mm -hmm. you for the can I just move on and get to where I need you to be right now um so he's just so good at that. Like even the little pieces where you're like, you get a sense of the people's characters. And this is another book where I feel like it's not like traditional horror. It's definitely like the supernatural, but you also do get a sense of um, horror, at least a little bit like in someone who, you know, gets executed you know wrongfully and horrific things is, that are happening in jail and all of these um you know murderers and guards that are treating prisoners horribly and like all of these things um almost like horrific things that you know are happening in the world horrors um but not sort of some of the horrid stories that we read. Okay. Is everybody there? No, I just started. Hey. Yeah. Hello? Welcome. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, you Good are day. live. Uh, usually give you a little bit more warning than that, but uh, <laughs> got in just <laughs> Sorry about that. So welcome. 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 <laughs> Sorry about that. So me Andy Dufresne. There. Andy Dufresne. Yeah, we were saying we were saying uh, we were gonna call you Dufresne. Sorry, I hope that's okay. <laughs> Sounds all right to me. It Doesn't want enough to get the browser installed. Oh. Okay. No so problem. We'll, we'll go back through and we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Jessica. Nice to meet you. I'm John. Nice to meet you. You know me. It's <laughs> Mike. <laughs> and I'm Eric. Good to meet you, sir. Good to meet you, too. Um, if you see Mike's um, picture show up, mm -hmm. which has like a frozen eye, it's really fun, and it look really young. So look out for it. It's fun. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Wait, do it again. <laughs> uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. 
It's so fun. It's not I working. Love it. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> oh, so I see it. There he is. Oh, you can do it on command. Mike. Okay. Let's really? talk about it. Okay. okay. We're going to talk about the bugs. We were just giving we were just giving our initial like thoughts on the book. So yeah. I can safely say it was a very, very good read. The idiot. To put it mildly, that's uh... <laughs> Yeah. Had you read it before? This is the first time I've actually read it. Oh, cool. That's so awesome. Had you seen the book? The movie, you mean? The movie? Not all the way through. That actually helped me. It kept a lot of it in suspense. Yeah. Um, a lot of the people here, I would read it all, many, many times and seen the movie many, many times. But a lot of the guy, other guys here were saying that they had seen the movie but kind of like forgot or read the book and forgot. So. Well, sure. You could visualize certain actors as characters, but honestly, again... First time I've actually read the book. Never saw the movie all the way through. Definitely helped out, all things considered. Yeah. I'm always kind of jealous of that, of people who, um, like, when we do these talks and haven't read the book. Um, the only time that we've done that for, for me has been, like, insomnia. That's it. I haven't <laughs> read like... that yet either. That's supposed to be... Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it's mixed bag. Some people really liked it. Skip it. Skip it. Some people didn't. Yeah, uh, I yeah. liked it. <laughs> King himself didn't care much for it, though. John and I tend to be on the eh side. Mm -hmm. and Mike and Eric are on the we liked it side. Oh no, I think Mike was saying to skip it. <laughs> Mike, I thought you. Yeah, I mean, liked it. look. I liked it while we were reading it, but I, I'm not rushing. I liked it while we were reading it. I, I did. I, I really did. I just, I, it is a cure for insomnia. I think it is, uh, it is perfectly titled. Uh, we recorded that discussion, Mike, so we can go back for the record and see how much you liked it. Okay, that was good. No, no. Okay. We, uh, you I know, trying to. Thing I. I liked it. I didn't like reading it. Ah. Uh, oh. Yes. Be the case. I I would agree with that. The story, you know. Well, no, I didn't. No, I wouldn't agree with that. You can go back and see how I felt about it. I didn't like it that much. The story, and I didn't <laughs> like reading it. So anyway, but you read it um, and see how you think about it. But you're not going to read it again. For we are not good discussion. <laughs> but you picked a good one to come in on, Andrew, because I, yeah. I think we pretty much unanimously love this book. Yeah. yeah. Right. Again, very well written, excellent serialization. Mm -hmm. So um, the next question I had was, I'm wondering, and it's obviously, um, Andy, you hadn't read it before, but I'm wondering if anybody... Um, had read it um, in the serial, uh, how it came out in those serial novels, or had any thoughts, you know, as far as the intro, or I'm assuming that everybody read it as a complete novel. Maybe that's not true. Maybe you went out and bought the old used serial copies, but um, even if you didn't read it as a serial, you could kind of tell the way that it was broken up. But I'm wondering if you read the intro from Stephen King, you could see the thought process as far as why he chose to do a serial and if anybody had any thoughts on that. Hi, um, well, I'm glad I didn't read it as a serial because I get very impatient. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I did notice a couple of places right when it, sort of switched parts and, and it switched like there was a, the slightest bit of like a recap or like going over the same thing uh, that you could tell was sort of built in because of the serialization. Um, and it wasn't enough to detract from the book. It was fine. Um, but you could, you could sort of see it uh, as it, as you went through. Um, it's an interesting concept doing it serially. I mean, it, parts of it sort of 
lent itself to that for the most part. So I could see, you know, I could see how it could have, how it was done, but you know, it, it read great. It's just a novel. Um, and I'm glad I read it as a novel. I wouldn't want to read it weeks or however long in between parts. Definitely agree. I can see why all things considered. Hey guys. It's easy to see it as a I need like three, five minutes. Um, I will be. Thing is, it actually sure. is kind of. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> what? Thing is, it is easier to read as a complete novel than a serialized form. Reading King's intro, you get the feeling that he, pretty, he usually writes most books as he goes along. I've read his book on writing, which he describes his process. He doesn't normally plot them out. And it does help, but you can tell where he, you're not sure he's going to go. With a serialized novel, anything can happen. At least that's my process. I feel. Yeah, I, I kind of got the feeling. So I did read it as a serial. Um, my mom and I read it together. And um, I remember picking them up at the li like they had, uh, not the library, at the grocery store. They sold them at the grocery store. I and, um, they were super cheap. I think they were like, I can't remember how much they were, but they were really, really cheap. Probably and, not. Um, we waited for them to come out, and uh, it was like waiting, 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 and it was very annoying. <laughs> so, um, I do remember that. And, but I kind of got the sense after reading the intro that it was almost like a little gimmicky. Like, let's I can see why. How that, how this goes, and and type of that, and um, like let's try it and see how. I can't blame them for that. But I didn't have noticed that that hasn't been done since. So I'm, I, 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 maybe he didn't like it. It wasn't his cup of tea. Um, I don't think it was very much appreciated. I know I, my mom and I didn't appreciate it. <laughs> like it wasn't something uh, that was really liked by any, like a lot of fans. And then they did come out with the, you know, full, full book. You have to imagine that it makes it so much tougher on an author, right? Because, you know, you're writing along, and, and I feel like many authors I, I hear speak about their writing process always talk about how it evolves as you write a story. Even once you sort of plot things out, things still evolve and things change. Um, and yet, you know, if you if you do it serially and you haven't written it out all beforehand, which I didn't get the sense he had done or, or is really how it's done, then you you lock yourself in and you can't go back and change something if it makes you know what comes later a little better as as you evolve things. Um, so I mean it's it sounds like it could be a, an interesting challenge, especially for an established author who's you know popular and and looking to do something a little different. But I can't imagine that anybody would want to do that multiple times and really constrain themselves in that way. It makes a good deal of sense, all things considered. Again. I know Stephen King, he doesn't plot his books very much. He doesn't like doing that. So it makes sense that he'd do it in this style, but there's almost, I'm not sure what the word is. You're certainly right in saying that it's to be difficult to lock oneself in in a serialized form. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's like he, he, he mentions, you know, at one part that Percy was at the institution, right, with the implication that he was working there, that, like, he got his transfer. And then... Yeah. At the very end, you find out that it's it's actually because he, you know, went catatonic um, due to what happened to him. And, you know, part of me wonders, given the serialization, like, did he know that going into, you know, did he really think Percy had just gotten a transfer and then decide to do a different ending? Like, you, know, you have to wonder. And, and other clues that could or could not be put in, like, you can't go back and say, oh, well, now I figured out the ending. Let me scatter, you know, this, that, and the other thing in. You you can't go back. Yeah, that's exactly. It gets confusing when you think about it. What are the interpretations? What do you go with? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would I've... say that we lost the fifth one, and then I didn't have it. 
for a long time. <laughs> oh, no. I kind of refused to go out and buy another one. So it just was annoying. The whole thing was, like, as a fan <laughs> and a reader, the serialized thing was annoying. And it was more expensive. Um, and that's why I'm trying to remember how much they were. He's um, he I made them, I it in, out in, in version got the new one. I'm sorry. In the so version I, that I have, it yeah. talks about the price point. Yeah, can you not hear me? No, I can hear you. It talks about the price point in the version that I have. Hello. Yeah, no. Hello. no. The beginning. In the version I have, uh, the the beginning, um, he talks about the price point. Um, uh, I, I think he said they were supposed to be like four ninety nine each, and then six ninety nine, or no, three ninety nine each and five ninety nine for the for the uh, the final one, which was a little bit longer. Yeah, um, I know that the edition I that was on. I mean, what year was that? What year was this? 95, was 96. 96. 95, 96. Yeah. The complete edition is 96, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Something like so, that. Early 90s. Okay. I mean, that, I feel like we were paying 25 bucks for a for for a book back then, weren't we? Well, like, then again, for a hardcover? I, 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 yeah, that's certainly so. I was, I was around for this. Andrew, what were you, two? I don't, know, I don't know if I was even born yet when they did that. <laughs> oh man, I'm not the youngest one here. I think I was the only one around that could have actually have gone to the bookstore for this. Back when bookstores were a thing. Oh god. Yeah, like I remember I, I probably remember went to the library this in Barnes and Noble. It's hard I, to I, find I, a local bookstore where I had ever since borders closed, all that's left is Barnes and Noble and if you're town style books a million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was telling them, Mike. I think you were you were offline, but I we, I was I got them with my mom at the grocery store. They sold them. Oh wow! The cereal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't really sell books at grocery stores unless they're the bargain bin kind. Yeah, our, our Ralph's has has a small section. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Andrew, where are you yeah. located? Uh, Central Florida, actually. Oh, cool. So oh, we're like all corners. Yeah. Uh, Representing the South with Tara. Tara's not on the call today, but she's in Alabama. Not too far from Florida, obviously. <laughs> hey. Technically, I'm in the South. I don't know. Whatever. We we mentioned the intro, uh, like the forward he wrote, um, and at one point in there he used the phrase like a Stephen King narrator, and it it was it was funny reading that because throughout the entire book I kept thinking like he's right this is such a Stephen King narrator. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I feel like we would have gotten to that conclusion even if he hadn't said it, but just the fact that he even sort of noted it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been when you're one of the most. Happens when he's one of the most prolific writers out there. You tend to be aware of your own work fairly easily. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I feel like we're more aware of it. Like you know, when we're reading something and we're like, "This, this is this is the stand, right? This is we did we did this. This is the stand. And this is just the stand again, right?" <laughs> Did you cover that? Did one? he forget? Did he forget he wrote the stand. <laughs> we did. We did the stand, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I, I wouldn't mind to talk about that one. That's a good one. We we already talked about it, but I would love talking about it again with you and Tara. And uh, well, <laughs> I said we could have a separate car box. <laughs> Yeah, especially especially when the when the new when the new um new adaptation comes out, you can have like a blood, you know, Dan a rehash, rehash. Oh God, 
Lord knows I'll <laughs> never actually get to come out. John's like cringing. I'm sick that day. <laughs> In advance. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. JR uh, threw up all over me. And <laughs> Man, kids are the best excuse. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> it's true. As far as I can't believe I, I can't believe I have to live in that house. Not that I'm living that again, but whatever. You live at that house, John. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was the characters um, in the book. Just how, we already talked a little bit about how great they're written. We all know Stephen King writes great characters. But as far as specifically the guards versus the prisoners, one of the things that I noticed is I thought, particularly with Percy, that Stephen King kind of went out of his way to write um, Delacroix coffee, obviously, but even Delacroix and Bitterbuck uh, Wharton to a lesser degree, but really the prisoners to be um, more sympathetic than Percy, even though Percy is um, the guard and um, as far as we know hasn't murdered anyone so um, that was very interesting to me um, because we found out you know what Bitterbuck and um, and uh, Adele Cruz, uh crimes were and they weren't good <laughs> so I thought it was very interesting sort of the way that they were written in my mind to be more sympathetic characters than Percy was pretty much from the beginning. I felt like Percy, you were it, it was written to hate him and I did. I was like, you're an asshole. And I didn't feel that way about the prisoners. Um, generally. I, I will I will say that he did not have to do very heavy lifting to get me to hate a character like Percy because that kind of entitled person is one of like that is probably like the top sort of villain for me is that is that <laughs> person who is sort of protected by higher ups and through nothing of their own merit and you know gets what everything they're handed to them and, and gets out of things and skates by and that drives me nuts so that uh it was easy for me to hate him that sort of thing's very real yeah Mm -hmm. oh yeah you know you know what's funny though i was thinking you have percy throughout this whole book who you know has his connections and skates by and and gets things that he wants because of them you know including getting to be up front at the execution um and then at the very end you have back with with old paul and his lady friend, and she suddenly is the connected one, and using her connections to go after, you know, old Paul's nemesis at the at the home, and it was it was such an interesting switch that like suddenly you're on the side of the connected people, and you like to see them use their connections to strike down the bad guy, and it was just I thought that that was a very interesting juxtaposition between the two of them, um, you know, one where the connections were were the source of problems, and and the other where it was like oh yeah you know here's a triumphant moment where she's able to beat him back yeah very cool insight certainly, certainly fascinating yeah i never, I never that, thought of that isn't that, that, especially <laughs> since um they spent a lot of time even to the point of like specifically having old paul be like god he reminds me a lot of percy he's a lot <laughs> like percy um and then for for her to do that, that I didn't make that connection. That's a really good point. But like, like I feel like that's the whole. Um, I thought that was the point of it, you know, because I, I mean I don't know if he meant to make a commentary on it, but when it works in your favor or when it works for the good, 
you're like, yeah, you know, but when it, when it doesn't, when it's somebody abusing it, you know, it's, that, that's when it, that's when it sucks. That's when, that. when, when the Percy's of the world are using it to, to, to just skate or be able to do whatever they want. It's, it's awful. But when someone can use those connections and put one of those people in their place or, I don't know, get a homeless shelter built or, you know, get some new le legislation pushed, pushed through somehow or, you know, whatever it is. But like then then you're like, all right, I'm all for connections. You know, as long as it as long as your team is the one that's winning. We're like, <laughs> right. rah, rah. It's true. Depends on what uh, side of the moral spectrum you're on. Percy is someone who is, by all accounts, exceedingly nasty. I, I think if he didn't have those characters, he'd still be a horrible person. Uh, Elena, he would. Well, you know, again, if she didn't have the connection, she'd still be a good person. It all depends on the person who has the connection rather than the connection themselves. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree. I always saw Percy as sort of the classic Stephen King bully, but he just happened to be a connected bully. He had a he was a bully with with power behind him. That's true. He he reminds me of like it's it's you know sort of like the petty town officials that you see in some of his other works. Mm -hmm. um, but instead of being sort of the town official, where like you know he's the selectman or the mayor, he's got you know the connected family. Um, but it's the same sort of concept that you know you give somebody you know who's got these predilections to be just bad people a little bit of power and they take it way too far. I, I mean, he's also sadistic though. I mean, wanting to be up close and have power over somebody suffering and dying is sadistic. And then some of the things that he does to Del Cruz, um, Del Cruz and um, Butterbuck are, you know, again, enjoying suffering, enjoying um, seeing them hurt and having making their life work. And I think that that's, you know, beyond just being you know, you know, a total, just a bully. I think it's more than that. Um, and that's why I think it's hard because, like, Del Crow, like, raped and killed, like, a, 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 I think it was a teenage girl. I know it wasn't, like, it was a, it was. I don't think it was a child. I think it was a teenage girl, and then set a fire that killed a lot of people to try to cover it up, which is horrible. And I just feel like you're, you're like, oh, but he's playing with that mouse. And, mm -hmm. You know, he seems like a nice guy, and you're like, damn that Percy. Oh, uh, it's just very in, like interesting how that was set up. Um, at least that's how I felt. I was like, "Oh, Delacroix, that's so sad." He seems like such a nice guy, right. and, you know. And I think I think King does a great job of, of doing that. I find myself so many times looking at this horrible, horrible character and saying oh but i see where he came from i see what made him like that or you know um that just sort of like not justifies but at least gives you an insight as to why they're the way they are um and i feel like percy for me was one of a very few characters where you're just like he's a fucking bastard <laughs> I just, I hate his guts. <laughs> yeah. Character is a lot like Dolores. Yeah. Someone I, that I, loves to hate. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a sign of a great author, I think, to know, you know, like to be able to, to 
have villains who are relatable but still villains, but also have villains who are who don't have those sort of redeeming qualities. Like, and to, to do all of that, um, and you know, it's funny because because you Jessica, you mentioned that like Delacroix was there because he raped and murdered someone, and then you know set the fire that killed a bunch of other people. I'm like, you forget that. You really do forget that. You know, you hear. And especially I, so I listened to this whole thing via audiobook. I didn't, um, was able to get that out of the library a lot quicker than getting, um, an actual copy of the book. And like the narrator's voice for him was this, this sort of soft, you know, accented voice. And you just forget why, like you totally forget why he's there. Like he just does become this sort of sideshow of, oh, you know, he's so, he's very simple and he's very, you know, look at my little pet mouse and look at what he can do. And, and, it is easy to forget why he's you know supposed to be there and, and what he's done to to get his sentence um you know and then of course with the with the execution going as wrong as it does you know you have even more sympathy for what he goes through in that instance um you know because they make it clear that you know he's sort of alive through the whole thing um and yeah again in that moment like i totally was not thinking about what did he do what was why was he there not that that would have justified what was done to him uh but still mm-hmm. he's got a cute little mouse he's taking yeah. care of a life <laughs> and he is soft-spoken he you know doesn't make a whole lot of trouble and he's only kind of uh Gives Percy, uh, you know, laughs at him and, and does that whole thing because Percy is such an asshole to him. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and I think one of the other reasons I was thinking about that um, Percy also comes off as so, so is that um, they do seem, the prisoners do seem to come off uh, you know, sympathetic, but also the other guards um, seems, you know, have so many redeeming qualities, you know, as guards, um, mm-hmm. like Brutal and Paul and all of them are just like, you know, believe in what they're doing and are trying really hard, you know, they're not, you know, trying to make it harder on them or to make their final day, you know, as, you know, stress-free free and quiet and pleasant as possible, but they still, you know, are going to do their jobs, but, um, and so you're like, oh, you know, these are nice guys, they're trying to do the best that they can, and then you're like, and then there's this asshole who's just <laughs> fucking it all up, <laughs> you know, um, so I think that's also like just the whole night and day of it that that King set up that makes it just so much more clear that Percy is the bad guy. Whereas if there was another guard that you know was really lazy or you know something like that, it would be a little bit more um, so clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're definitely not sad that Percy ends up catatonic at an insane asylum. Certainly not. It's better than to get rid of the other detestable character in the process. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, Wild Bill being one of the most really nastiest character I think King has ever created. That's saying a lot. Yeah. He'd be right up there. Shitty. He, he, he to me was sort of the exaggerated evil whereas percy was more uh, not realistic because wild bill was realistic but but no i i think percy Percy. seems like he could have been plucked out of one of our lives like we just ran into this douchebag named percy and And, and i also felt like percy was more realistic and that unfortunately um there are guards like that um who treat prisoners like shit and you know we know that 
there are people like that who are attracted to positions of power, um, like police officers and prison guards, so that they can exert that power over vulnerable people. Mm-hmm. So uh, there are persons out there. I, <laughs> so yeah. I think that's why it feels so real, I guess, to me. This is building off a stereotype, obviously, but the idea that in 1930s in the South, the majority of the prison guards we see don't seem to be very racist, don't seem to be, you know, they seem to be kind is probably a little idealistic on right. the King part. Is it acceptable break from reality there? Actually. Yeah. Well, and that's why they all seem so like seem so um yeah the guard seems so uh like a plus human like being and, and you know ideal employees um i think it's like yeah, they're all like that yeah i think that's um yeah for me, it was always an extension of Paul. I, I mean, again, I this is the first time I've read this, but having seen the movie, um, for me, it was sort of like Paul. You know, there's something about a good boss, or, or you know, or a good person in charge, um, sort of having that trickle down. And if Paul was the you know was more percy-ish then i think we'd see more of that in the guards but when when he he establishes a certain environment then i think the people under him sort of they they go along with that so for me yes all of the other the guys dean and and brutus and and everybody were sort of um, just mirroring Paul's behavior. So I think he was always the linchpin. You know, he was the guy that that made the mile what it was um, with another guard in there. Even Brutus, let's say, let's say Brutus was there without Paul. It might be a totally different mile, you know, but because of Paul, the guards were better for it. That's just that my opinion. Yeah. He's a good hero. I have to say that hasn't been my experience in my limited time as a boss, but you know, yeah, but you've been time. There for years. Maybe you're yeah. just not as good a boss as you think you are. Oh. <laughs> I'm no Paul Edson. Let's just put it that way. But neither am I a person Wetmore. You know. <laughs> So well, are you more say, brutal? I'm not a Stephen. I'm not a Stephen King uh, character. Um, I bet you're one of them. He's done a lot of characters. Yeah. <laughs> we could find somebody. Those... Somebody. Yeah. We could find somebody that's Jessica. Find one of those quizzes and take it, and then find it'll probably come out really horrific though. And I'll be like, ooh. I'm bad. I would be surprised if any like Lightspeed quiz took the time to identify more than ten characters. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. That's um, true. You are Pennywise the clown. Yeah, and I'd be like, oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, hey. <laughs> I want to be Pennywise the clown. <laughs> I know I I keep taking uh, I keep taking BuzzFeed's quit bu- quizzes about um, the Avengers and I keep coming up with Captain America and I'm like anybody else anybody else <laughs> I think you just have to mess with the questions have a formula for those things <laughs> oh I've tried I have tried to get it to get me to be anybody you're just Always you know you just buy a cap there Mike <laughs> you are Captain America. <laughs> It's okay, Captain America. Did they require you to upload a picture of your ass? <laughs> yes, actually. And maybe that's the thing. Well, I have America's there you go, ass. Man, you know? I, I do have America's ass. 
<laughs> it's amazing that a quiz knows that about you, but <laughs> there's a lot of personal information online, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would stand up and turn around, but it's Andy's first meeting. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you saved that for the second or third meeting. <laughs> oh, God. Third. Yeah. It's just like the, it's just like the dating where you wait till the third date that's when it gets serious. What is it going to be the third one? <laughs> okay, so okay, I think my next question was like something like, "What the fuck climax?" Something about the climax. Um. So let's discuss. Most of you are saying that you didn't remember it. Right. So, um... Well, so seeing it was very tense. and Or reading it was very tense. And I, did, I told you guys, I did that thing where I, like, read, uh, you know, a few chapters and then watched a few minutes and then read a few chapters, watched a few minutes. Like, so I was never getting ahead of where I was in the book. Um, it was pretty wild because it's so faithful. Um... But yeah, especially at the end, uh, my wife like said, do not do this. Just read it because otherwise you're going to spoil stuff because it's a little bit disorganized. And that was, again, it was so tense and well written. And I was really glad I did that. I'm actually looking for your. You're um, looking for my questions. Yeah. Yeah, I've got them pulled up too. Sorry about okay. that. You just said thoughts on the climax I, uh, there. I, oh, there you go. That's. that's I did weird. not see it coming. I uh, I bought in hard to that maybe what was happening that was John Coffey was giving him the disease, you know, to to have these basically. I did not I did not see it coming that he was going to pull his his gun and and start shooting. No, um, I didn't either. Well, okay, so and uh, that's my question. Uh, uh, What's the climax for you guys? What is the actual climax? Well, oh, it's oh. it's that uh, the scene where coffee grabs him. Everybody, all the craziness that happens right then. Yeah, yeah, that's the climax. Yeah, yeah, okay. that is agreed. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, the the midnight ride to to the warden's wife's house that was that was pretty great too because it started to build that tension. Like you started to feel like, oh shit, somebody's gonna get fired or killed. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, definitely before the end of John Coffey, but then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah, I, yeah, I sort of felt I, like the, that I entire that... last book was the climax. Sure. I, I'd buy that. Makes sense if it was. Mm -hmm. Where, I can't remember because I think in part because this was all audio, so I didn't like have distinct breaks. I mean, it said parts, but I don't remember. Where the the when John Coffey, you know, sort of controls Percy, was that part of the last book or was that before the last book? I copy the book in my hand, I can figure that out right now. <laughs> that was that was the part that was the, the last book because he um he yep. doesn't pass on he passes on the sickness from uh or he passes on the 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 the, the bugs from um I don't remember her name, the warden's wife to yeah. Percy, and right. then Percy shoots Melinda. Wharton. Melinda, yeah. Melinda, right? Yeah, something. Is yeah, I think it is Melinda. Yeah, I didn't. You know, I thought. I thought by the time they got to the execution of John Coffey, I felt like we were on the other side of the climax. Like this was oh, yeah. this was now wrapping things up and, and tidying things up and and you know letting him go to his peace if it really was peace um, was you know at that point. It, you know, the air had been out of the balloon, you know, the and it was sort of just rolling on to tie everything up. I was wondering if there was going to be, if something different was going to happen in the book than I remembered in the movie. You know, I was wondering if there was going to be some sort of miracle, you know, like they're going to be taking him down the tunnel and all of a sudden he's going to start breathing again, you know. Um, I, I, I was sort of, 
I don't want to say holding out hope for that, but I was sort of like, I guess part of me was, was sort of there thinking like, well, yeah, it's probably the mouse that Paul is going to visit, but maybe we're going to find, like, a really tall old black guy in the shed, you know, like, 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 maybe the electrocution didn't take, you know, <laughs> like, that's sort of where I was, so I was kind of hoping for more. It's almost like a classic shooting King Twist. It's like he's sort of cheating himself. I don't know. Your fashion, you playing your expectations. Like you expect him, John Coffee, to make it, but instead, King makes you work through that in totality. You make sure that John Coffee stays dead, and it just makes it a much stronger tragedy for it. Or am I yeah, making... I mean, no, no. I there are a lot of times where I'm, yeah, where I, I'm like, oh, he he's trying to make us think X and and Y is going to happen. Um, and I feel like for me, this was the time where I actually wanted Y to happen, you know, but in, but my heart wanted Y, but my brain was like, no, no, he's telling the truth this time. He's not, not going to pull a switch. Yeah. And I was disappointed about that too. Um, do you guys remember like what, what was all going on when this first came out? Like, I feel like I had a sense that this was Stephen King coming out against the death penalty. And that's sort of how I read the book this time is like, wow, like the death penalty really sucks and should only apply to like Wild Bill. Everybody mm. else should Certainly. be rehabilitated. I don't know. It, but do you remember the fervor around it or like if he ever publicly said anything? I don't. I have no idea what Stephen King's thoughts on the on the death penalty they are, but I'm sure I'm sure they're out there. That's true. Because it was a uh, dead man walking was another one, right? Yeah, that was from. There was some sort of. The... Yeah, I think that was like the big anti death penalty or humanizing the prisoner movie, and then this this came out shortly thereafter or something around there. Yeah, That's... but that's why I, I bring that up. To basically say, I, I unfortunately knew, even though I didn't really know the ending, I knew that John Coffey was probably going to die because you felt so bad that it was still going to happen. And it's just this impending dread that he wasn't going to let up on. You know, I mean, he the way he wrote it at the end to give the guards comfort in what they were doing that, you know, John Coffey saying like he was ready, he was tired of the the sadness and tired of the the harm people did to each other, and and he let Paul sort of see some of that and, and experience some of that, the brightness and and the overwhelming nature of it. Like I, I feel like it would almost like as a reader, like I was happy for him to get his peace and release from that. Like to to bring him back would have done him a disservice, and I think you know if all he was trying to do was help throughout the book. To help. So you give him his peace. Yeah. But yes, I, I, I agree. Letting John go is the right thing to do. Um, but I, part of me is like, that just goes, that, that just goes to show how good King is at writing because you know, it's what, it's what's right for John, but you, I felt so attached. So I felt so much love for John that I didn't want him to die, even though, even though that would be what's best for him. You know, I, you think about people in your own life and people you've lost or whatever and you're like yeah you know what this is this is good for them but it's still hard to say goodbye it's still hard to let them go they've all gone through that somewhere. yeah, and, yeah. andy i'm sorry i missed what you said i'm just saying I, I think we've all been through that somewhere or another someone you care about passed away yeah. you're sad seeing them go but you know that quality of life ain't the best to happen. 
Yeah, it's a hard truth. Very hard to discuss or even deal with, but there it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of, were we doing the, why do you think he wanted to die? Would you have respected his wishes? So we I think we kind of jumped into that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably best to respect it. Yeah. yeah, the why he wanted to die, it, so he had a hard life. And he was oh. sort of sentenced to more of a hard life moving forward, right? Well, honestly, it's, I, I think... I don't think it was, it was just a hard life. It was... Go ahead, Mike. I was, I was going to say, I, I think it's... First of all, look at, you know, it's John Coffey. He's a black man in the 1930s, right? 20s, 30s. Hmm. That's a tough life to begin with. And now he's got this ability to take sickness, death, pain, whatever it is, out of somebody. And I, I think he's just sort of run himself ragged. And and he's done. He's 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 done what what God put him on this earth for and failing to do to do what he wanted to do um, with the I can't remember their last names. I want to say Kitchener, but that's that's Jaws. Um, <laughs> failing to be able to bring those girls back, I think that broke him. I think he was done. And um, yeah, like John Coffey is a beautiful, beautiful creation. And anybody but John Coffey would say the world is a worse place for not having him in it. Mm -hmm. um, but the burden of of doing what he does throughout his life, I think is just too much. It's just too much for, for a human person. Think about what happened to the ads today. It would have been on the horizon. Second world war and Lord knows how many other crises. Oh, he might have wanted to talk about that the chance. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, don't forget in addition to his healing, he, he clearly had, you know, so some at least rudimentary form of telepathy where he can hear people's thoughts and and yeah you know, know sort of those things and, and you have to imagine the awful awful things he's heard that you know he can't really do anything about it can't help and and it's just there and it's constantly inundating him i imagine being in a prison at the end was not helpful in that respect and it was probably way you know that's probably what, part of the reason why his eyes were always crying at that point yeah. i think it was in part the girls that he couldn't save and in part just all the awfulness that he must have been being inundated with mm -hmm. where's that on the soul i mean you take away such little things you the mouse you get tired Mm -hmm. I, I just I wonder I guess what I was trying to get at as far as like respecting his wishes about wanting to go is it just seemed like it was so taken for granted that like Hal couldn't do anything if they let Hal know like he's innocent um, we know because he, he saw the vision and he know, you know, he used magic in the same way that he magically healed your wife, by the way, so it shouldn't be that hard to believe. Um, can you do something about it? Um, because you're the warden. Can you, can you do something in the same way I can't remember what the guy's name is but like how he commuted the sentence forever, um, to like just regular prison um, or something um, but I guess like if he just went to not death row then he popped <laughs> um, I don't know it just seemed like well he's not going to be able to do anything so let's just not even bring it up and i just felt like it was just too easy like all the guards had to deal with how awful it was but the husband of 
the wife that he saved doesn't have to deal with it. And it seemed, it just seemed like too, I don't know. It didn't seem. Wait, they, they let the warden off the hook. Yeah. Hmm. Um, to not even try well, I... if he could do something. This is such an awful way for John to die. To, you know, take a bunch of morphine and and do that. Then, sure. I mean, I almost wonder if it's like if they were trying to make like a Jesus um, meta like comparison or something. Um, you know, I don't know, but. See, I, I I didn't see it that way. I don't there is nothing they could have done. In nineteen thirties in the South trying to get the black guy off for the murder of the two girls, like based on some, you know, a magic vision and the fact that somebody else may have been there a month ago, like there is not a damn thing that could have been done. And I'm glad they didn't spin their wheels with fuel thing. Like it just would have felt it for for the literary purpose, it would not have felt it would have been sort of a waste because like, you know nothing is going to be able to be done. Like it's clear there's not going to be a last minute report. There's no going to be the, the governor is not going to pardon this guy. He's not going to commute a sentence. So don't spend your don't waste time, you know, and sort of kill the momentum by by trying to do all these things. Like I I, I think they understood the reality of the situation. Um, I look I, I appreciate the fact that you know Paul's wife for a moment sort of lost it. And you know, called him a coward and, and said, you know, how could you do nothing? And I think that was sort of the, the stand-in for for this feeling of like, well, couldn't they do something? But even she quickly was like, no, you're right. You know, I'm sorry. Uh, and and I think that was was enough of a moment that you know was deserved because you, you sort of have to ask the question. But it, the point wasn't belabored. If you know, I feel like it could have been had he tried to get the warden to do all sorts of things. It wasn't happening. There's no way. Well, I, I think the warden is perfectly positioned because I don't think the warden has the power. You know, if they had deputy governor or lieutenant governor or whatever, whatever or, or the governor, or, you know, like, then, it, then it's a different situation. I, I don't think that there is any any person that is more powerless in this situation than than Moore's is because he he did reap the benefit of John Coffey's power he saw it he knows what he did but there's there is in in the machine of the penal system there's nothing he can do even and you know what I'm sure he probably wanted to yeah but, but there, there's nothing he can do Yeah, it's good sense. Ready for our next question? Yes, I've been waiting the whole time. I should have made it the first question. <laughs> uh, What's the next question? Movie versus book. That's yeah. your wait, wait, wait. Before we get before before we get to that before we get to that, I have I have a question that's more sort of book story focused. Okay. Um, Paul's wife's death, mm. including it with all that detail. Wasn't that weird? Very. Yeah. Good. Did it? What did it add? Did, what did it add at that point in the story? I think it made you. Perhaps. Sure. Uh, wait, wait. I didn't hear what Andy said. Andy, what did you say? Yeah. Go ahead. I said an extra sense of tragedy, perhaps. Yeah. What, uh, remind me, remind me of her death. I think it was a car accident. The, the bus, the bus, the bus accident. Oh the end, yes, 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 yes. The yes. granddaughter's graduation and okay, uh, yes, 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 that, yes. You know, he was the only one who lived, or uh, the only okay, one who, like seriously injured. Oh, it did illustrate the coffee powers that he got. Mm -hmm. That might have been part of it. 
Yeah, so, but he also says, like, mm-hmm. oh, I never got a cold, and, you know, I lived to be 104. Like, you got the coffee back. <laughs> True. So, honestly, for me, and it, it's funny because I – and now I'm totally blanking on who it is in my life that does this. But there's that someone in my power? life. No, not that it has coffee powers. But there's someone in my life that <laughs> consistently references um, the hero's journey. Um, John, John, what the frig is his name? Calabrese? Anyway, what's that? Calabrese? <laughs> No, it's John somebody. There's somebody in my life who consistently references the hero's journey. And it's like, in order to be the hero that you're supposed to be, you need to lose everybody. And having Paul and like seeing this at that moment, you know, uh, having Paul, his kids, where are his kids? I mean, he's got kids. Why aren't they come to visit he seems like completely alone and like taking away his wife and taking away his wife so um violently so so explicitly um it is you know it is a hallmark of the hero's journey um the only difference being that 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 paul started his hero's journey and his heroic things um before that actually happened but um but yeah, I think it is to highlight his being touched by coffee and and being almost completely alone in the world. You know, the or for, for what's his friend's name? His Elaine. his special friend. Elaine. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine. Yeah, it, it is a very convenient way to make us be okay with him potentially being with Elaine, I guess. But yeah, it it, it seemed like a lot of detail. That yes, it's too much detail in my opinion. I think they could have just said, um, and we're gonna get to it. They could have said similar in the movie that she died a long time ago and my kids are dead and my grandkids are dead because I'm really freaking old. Um, there you go. Um, and it's sad. We- and I'm sad and alone because the only people who are alive are my great grandkids and they probably don't even know me because I'm old. We are talking about the author who wrote a scene in explicit <laughs> detail where a mother tries to feed her dead baby pudding. Ugh. Okay? That is, that is okay? not a scene. Ugh. I know what yeah, some yeah. good stuff. So I know just, what book just, that was. Great book, but dear lord is that not stuff. Just, just set I your do, expectations. I do I don't I don't have a problem with this scene itself. I think I have more of a problem with the placement. Like I feel like it would have been more impactful if you learned about this very harrowing thing that's given him a lot of sorrow in his life earlier than the very end of the book. You dealing with old Paul throughout this book and like yes, this scene gives a, a measure of, of the things he's went through, but it just feels like at that point, like, do I need to learn more? The book's basically over. Um it just seemed like a weird spot for it. Hmm. Perhaps they were like the, halfway through or right off the bat, it might have been different. Yeah, I don't know. It, look, at the end of the day, I love this book, and it's not—it's sort of a minor thing. But it was just—it just sort of struck me as I was listening to it. Like we're basically at the end here. I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the execution of John Coffey had even already happened. Mm-hmm. It's like there's not. I don't think we, you know, at this point, like, I think we're on the end point. Like, I don't think we need this whole scene here. Another I don't think it's adding to it. Emotional roller coaster right at the end. Yeah. No, it, it definitely fell out of place, but when you think about it, where else would it have fit? Like, I guess it could have made some of the other wife scenes more poignant, where you're like, oh my God, like, this is one of the last times he gets to do this thing, or, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe shoehorn it in 
between her freak out at the end, calling him a coward, but before she comes and apologizes to him, like sitting in his chair after they leave. Oh man, that's some last five years shit. Oh, <laughs> that's good. That's sorry about the language, Mike. I... That's no. You know, what? Melody here. Why are you apologizing to me. Don't okay. Just I, sleep at eight o'clock at night. What the hell are you talking? About? Okay. Okay. I'm just making sure. You gave me a look when I said douchebag earlier, and I was like, "Oh, did I did not intend." There was. I have no problem with language. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck all the language. <laughs> 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 um, was it Paw Patrol or PJ Mask? PJ Mask for Andy. For your knowledge. She was watching PJ Masks earlier, and we were, I was singing the song because of how much PJ Masks I watch for my with my two kids. I'm. So I was. I'm like, not even sure if Andy knows who Melody is. Oh, well, wow. Andy's is not on Facebook, so I don't even know if Andy knows uh, anything about I know. my my, my two year old daughter Melody. My mother has shown me a few pictures. She's adorable. Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. she's on Facebook a lot. She's very Facebook uh, prolific, so you're missing out. <laughs> I suppose I am. I do have a LinkedIn, but that's about it. I'm actually not on LinkedIn. I feel like I should keep it, and I, I purposely like try to avoid everybody at work, and then everybody at work is on LinkedIn, and I should be like, what? Um, John, to get to jump back to your question, because I, I got to jump off, off in a few minutes. Um, to jump back to your your point, for me, I just sort of accepted that she was was gone, and had accepted that she had been gone for so long. And then when that when that scene comes up, and to find out how awful it truly was, I was just like. Stephen King, you know, like, <laughs> we're so desensitized. You know? <laughs> oh, God. Of course, it was. Of course, it was horrifying <laughs> and terrible, and you know, I'm like, there's, like, wasn't there like a body that was like literally ripped in half, like ten feet from them? <laughs> you know, oh, like, yeah, she she was laying like, next oh, to a yeah. quarter of a man in a suit. <laughs> Yes, no. a quarter of yeah, exactly. It is exactly. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, well, like well, I okay, keep going. No, I like yeah, I I had sort of written it off as her being dead, and then I'm like, oh, oh, uh, it was a horrifying death. Okay, now I get it. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Jessica. <laughs> One thing you have to get off soon. We have to discuss the movie versus the book. So I will say that this is one of the only times that I will tell people that in my opinion this is a case where the movie is better than the book. That is uh, wow. on record too. Laying down the gauntlet. It is a recorded. Okay, conference. Jessica, you're officially out of the group. You're done. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't really give an answer. I haven't seen the full I'm movie. The, oh yes, that's I'm the crown chief. Uh, chief of this group right now. If you can't kick me out. Wow. Bringing it back to current politics. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you. I'm what. the best. There is no other. I'm the I'm the, <laughs> the king of the group. You guys have to go. Thank you. I'm the, king of the world. Uh, 90s references. Okay. So uh, I don't know. I don't um, know if I've seen the movie. What? Well, okay. At least I've seen some of it. I haven't, I haven't finished it, but I've seen some. I, of it. I feel like I'm. I've seen parts of it, but it goes back to Eric. What you were saying at the very beginning. Like I don't know how much of. I don't know if I've actually seen it or if it's just pop culture, like the clips of references to like it. Clips at the Oscars or something. Like I feel like I get a sense of it from there. <laughs> All right, look. I, I do have to say though, regardless of whether I've seen it, like Tom Hanks in my mind is the 
was an excellent well, choice in the movie. for there you go. Paul. Everybody was perfectly cast. Is, it was a beautiful that is cast. The movie. It's Tom Hanks. There you go. You've seen it. Yes. Do we do we have to postpone this conversation and everyone has to go and watch that movie? That's not a bad call. Do we need to do that? I'm I'm not I mean I'd be willing to see it. I'm not again. If it. I haven't or see it again if I have, uh, who knows? <laughs> because if we have to have a critical discussion where I'm gonna say that <laughs> That this is the only time that I can definitively say that, in my opinion, the movie is better than the book. And the chief reason is that there is really no old Paul in the movie. <laughs> old Paul comes in in the beginning. Old Paul is in at the end. There's Makes no, sense. There's no old Paul checking in like multiple times yeah like it doesn't go back to him every few chapters it streamlines it makes it a lot yeah. easier to follow i love old paul i love <laughs> old paul old paul is good <laughs> he's not bad but come on you gotta have a streamlined story the difference between one medium and the next so but mike your oh, your team okay. book i'm team I book agree. even though i love the movie uh john and andrew still need to watch so i haven't clearly i haven't seen the movie Clearly, I haven't seen the movie in a long time because I okay. forgot that. I, I So I would need to see the movie again. But I, I did. I know I've seen the movie. I don't know yeah. the last time I saw the movie, but it's been a while. And so reading the book for me was it was amazing. And I loved it. And I loved old Paul. I loved old Paul's story because it brought something new for me to the story. I did. I I, well, I I wanted I wanted him to punch what's his face in the nose and, and break it. Like I just I loved old Paul. What's yeah. his name? The the, the joke book Paul, guy. I can tell you. Right? Was it Brian? Uh, Byron? Brian? Byron? Byron? Be something. No, Brian. Be something. No. If you love old Paul, then you're going to like the book better because that is the main. It's the main um, difference. Dolan. 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 What was his first name? Brad. 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 Uh, Brad. 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 Which I have that right here is one of the newer ones. <laughs> if you love I did, old I... Paul, you will love the book more because that is my main reason for loving the movie. More like the movie more than the book. Other, in addition to the actors, for example, Delacroix, the actor who plays him is Mr. Noodle. I know that Sesame Street. He is um, not the only Mr. Noodle, but yes, I, I, I <laughs> yes, and, yeah, he was the second um, one. Old Paul, who I don't like that much but still enjoy, is Reverend Alden from. Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> Never really watched that one though. <laughs> oh, love me, love me some Little House on the Prairie, and I great character actors all throughout. I, I have to wonder now. I'm gonna have to see this because I'm gonna have to wonder if I'm gonna agree with Jessica because I, it's not that I didn't like Old Paul. It's that every once in a while, while reading Old Paul, I was impatient to get back to you know 1930s. Yeah. And there's a couple yeah. other things like um, I think that the book, I mean, the movie does a better job of explaining um, how uh, Paul got his coffee powers. Um, in the movie, it's because coffee touches his arm and shows him what happened um shows him you know what happened to the to the little girls in the book it's because he kind of is like he's is touching him and is just because he accidentally um like is getting overwhelmed with telling him that he wants he wants to die and i'm like that's weird mm. it was an accident um mm. I and I I like it better that he's doing it on purpose. Sure. Um, so I I liked that story 
point better, but that's just my opinion. Um, no. We should definitely well, reconvene. Wrong, but you know, <laughs> let's reconvene. We start the next meeting with that, and we move on to the book. <laughs> reconvene. Yeah, um, we... we can still we can still uh, nominate a new book, and um, but I vote for reconvening. Yeah. Anybody else want to re? It can be any you know. I'd be up for it if if I can work into the schedule. I absolutely be up for it, but I do have to go. It is. uh, I know you guys. It's much later, but eight twenty for me is like way past my bedtime. Mm, All right, old Paul. Okay. Now you know why I like old Paul so much. <laughs> I am. Thanks, old Paul. perfect sense. Thank you, Jessica. Well, I have All right. a yeah, yeah. Night, Mike. Night, um, yeah, guys. That uh, Chase is going to be taking over as chief uh, for running these discussions and setting them up. So he's going to be taking it over. Uh, I will ask him if he wants to run the movie discussion for this book or if he wants me to just do that one I don't care either way but uh, we Andy we kind of rotate who who does this role so my time on the throne has ended your watch um, has ended all good it's all good uh, so I went ahead and I nominated Chase so he, he's happy to do it for a while mm-hmm Thank you for doing it for so long, Jessica. You've been carrying the torch for a while. I don't know. How long has it been? Not sure how long this group been active, so <laughs> we've been we've been at least three years, mm-hmm. maybe even a little longer. It's been Yeah. We've gone through a number of books. Yeah, I was I haven't been in the group for the whole time, so um I have no idea how long I've been doing it. For a while. I, I would yeah. say, just off the top of my head, probably two years. Two years? Really? Wow. I, I would <laughs> almost guess. I mean, how long did you do it, John? It's. I don't remember. I was the first one who took over after Mike, and it was, I think I did three or four books, but I don't remember what kind of time span it was. And then Eric, you did it for a while? Yeah. Yeah. I, mine was probably only six months or so, something like that. Uh, so I might have been one of the shorter ones, actually. Um, John did it for when I was when I started. John was doing it, and then Eric, you did it, and then I did it. But it's all good. All good. Yeah. So yeah, um, Andy will send out a new nomination, and and you can nominate a book. I'm looking through. There was a definitive list, but I can't find it. Oh, of all. Uh, I think he put it. Didn't Mike put it at the top of the? That's what I thought. It's just got new activity there. Huh. It's got to be somewhere else, like notes or something. But anyway, we don't have to record that part. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the broadcast, and then we can still say bye. But uh, this has been the Green Mile.